Hello, I'm P. Rastall. Um, I'm an artist. Um, I've started as an illustrator, got a degree in illustration, and then I moved into the area of artist books, which is quite obscure. Um, I did the content, the binding, the illustrations, um, and then after that, I started working in ceramics. Um, so I did another master's in ceramics. Um, so I work in various materials. I work in installation, drawing, ceramics, sculpture, and painting. Um, and I kind of flip between the, the, the whole areas of, of each of those. Um, in my work, I have lots and lots of starting points. Uh, I don't have a set system of working. Quite often, I'll start in a sketchbook. Um, in various forms of sketchbooks, little ones that I carry around with me, bigger ones, and I can do any kind of starting point. Um, sometimes it's just words, and I just write and write and write till I've got the things out of my head. Uh, sometimes it's more traditional uh, drawing. I do a lot of work based on hands, so I do uh, drawings from life, go to life class still, uh, sometimes from models. Um, and then sometimes it's just straight out of my head. I'll go back to that one in a minute. Uh, I like big sketchbooks. I like sort of playing with materials still. So sometimes it will be just a bit of madness, fun, uh, words again. Uh, other times, these are great sketchbooks to work in, by the way, these cheap, big sketchbooks, because they're quite sacrificial. Again, we've got hands. Um, because I work in 3D quite a lot of the time, I'll often just draw shapes, use colour. Um, and then these develop quite often into rough ideas. Um, so they're just line drawings, and they don't always follow through into anything. So, for instance, um, there's a figure hanging, but a floating figure. Um, figures with wings, you can see that one. So this might have developed into a mixed media piece, but at the moment it hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, it might do. Several more ideas, working in pencil, working in ink. Uh, I work a lot on hands and feet. So I draw feet and I draw hands, like I just showed you before. And then um, these develop into sort of rough sculptural shapes. Um, the drawing doesn't usually go much further than that, although it occasionally goes into painting. Uh, sometimes it needs to work through several uh, versions before I can actually decide what I want to do. Um, often it's rejected at this point. Uh, and when I'm looking at shapes and ideas, it will go between the sketch version and the model, the made version. So what I would do normally, that's quite a recent one. I quite often use ink because with ink you can't change your mind. I like that uh, definite mark. So if I was working on this idea, and this is the one I'm just going to show you today, this, this uh, folded figure. I've only started on that recently and it becomes, it's kind of embryonic um, in shape. And when I'm drawing and painting, I'll, I'll use that shape, that, that rolled shape, um, quite loosely painted. Sometimes they'll have a head, like this one's got a kind of head form. They don't always have arms. Sometimes they'll have feet. Um, and, and they might just be three strokes of paintbrush. Um, they might develop into lots of mark making. They might have additions, so for instance, you saw the one with the wings before, so it might add some sort of loose wings. To me, that's, that's enough of a development um, before I'd move on. I'll actually carry on with this page. So I might go for the same rolled figure, but maybe I'd make it rounder. Change and abstract the form, so maybe the feet would become bigger. Maybe the head actually disappears, so it's got like a, a much more of a, um, a round shape. Um, then it, once I've kind of got something in my head, I then reject it. I, I don't know why, but I always work that way. So if it's become round and, and fat, I might then go long and thin. So I might go small feet and a bigger head. Um, and these will develop over pages. As well as the, the ink, quite like these ink brushes, these marker pens, 
the, uh, just um, a marker brush pen. And again, it's a definite mark, so you, haven't, you can't change your mind. You can draw over it. So again, the same form might change. It might have, for instance, a long, a long leg. And it might have a more realistic foot on it. But I can't take away that mark, which is okay, because when I'm thinking about um, creating the next piece, I'll think, do I want that line or do I want this line? It gives me choices. Uh, I might decide that I need a, a lot of weight at the bottom of the piece for stability, if I'm making it out of clay. So I might actually fill that in to sort of show myself I need weight. Maybe I don't want a head. It might just become a block or it might just have something really small to show it's finished. Obviously that one's more abstracted than then these ones. Um, but then I can go back to these another day. So once I kind of got this idea of this rolled figure, this curled embryonic form in my head, the next stage for me, um, and I'll work between these ideas over several weeks, going back to them, um, will be clay sketches. So I've brought a few here. Um, this idea of this skull form, um, that became a couple of pieces. This is porcelain on wire. That, nothing happened to that. It's just, it's just a sample, really. And there's lots of different pieces that I make. Um, some of them become a sculpture. Some of them become incorporated into things. Uh, you can see here... Um, there's a pair of feet that might well become a sculpture at some point but at the moment it's just a clay sketch um, that's a fairly recent one working on the idea of um, again embryonic but egg forms which I do quite a few times obviously chicken and egg, a bit corny but we've got this idea of flight um, incorporated in that sometimes they'll just be random shapes that will come out of the clay uh, sometimes they become attitude I was obviously having a bit of a bad day, angry, angry cat thing there. Um, and then sometimes they go through the process to finish, but they're still clay samples. So um, that one's been uh, fired, this one's been fired, these have all been fired. Um, this one and that one have had cobalt oxide rubbed into them and washed off. And then this one's gone a stage further with um, some glaze on it got a raku glaze on that one, um, some painting, some majolica painting on there, it's a lead tin glaze. So whether that will become something else, um, I don't know at the moment. This idea of sphinx is in my head as well, this sphinx woman, I've made a couple of pieces on that. And then sometimes I just make body parts as well, so I've got some hands and things. Um, like I showed you with the clay sketches would be to just have a bit of a play um, I've extruded some coils um, because if I'm working with body parts obviously the body is quite tubular you've got your torso, your arms you know, even your feet and your hands are quite um, tubular so quite often we'll use a coil I could have rolled the coils um, but just for the sake of speed I've extruded and this clay is um, paper clay and it's a mixture of quite a heavily grogged clay, um, paper, and just some cheap clay um, for flexibility and cheapness. And um, I just have a bit in front of me, and I just model. So I've got this idea of, of the embryo in, in my head. So I would maybe start just with a flat bit, flatten it, and then try and mimic that embryonic shape, that roll shape. So I'm thinking that is your torso, but then you've got your legs um, folded up. So I might have got a really beautiful curve um, going on that kind of looks figurative, even though it's just a piece of clay at the moment. And then from that, I'd get um, quite often a pencil. Because I draw a lot, I like to use a pencil when I'm making. It's, it's familiar, it's easy. Um, if I've forgot my tools, I've always got a pencil. If I've got a bit of clay knocking around, I've got a clay um, in my studio in Abergelly. I've got a, a wet coat studio with the kilns, two kilns, two wheels, um, big slab roller. I've got a lot of equipment there. But I've also got the studio in Clandidno, um, which is a thinking and drawing studio, dry studio. But there is a bag of clay if I want it. So that's when the pencils come in handy. 
And I just start modeling. So this, you can see the form of, of the legs. Now, instantly, that's changed from that very rolled form. That's become quite upright, just with the way my hands have decided today to work the clay. Um, I would let it dry a bit sometimes. I'd carve away um, and maybe even change the pose. I might decide um, to stretch if that was the shoulders. Uh, I might add a head, um, pull another bit of the tube off, and I might just add a head. I'd just scratch and slip a bit of paper clay, loose paper clay, and glue that on, maybe model from that. Um, and I'd let the clay take its own form. Um, that head's a bit small, so maybe I would extend it. Um, I might add some more clay. And scratch and slip again. And uh, I can just keep adding. The beauty of the clay is that however much I want to add or take away a cam, the difference between the ink is, the ink is there, that's concrete. This is a flexible thing. Um, I like the ink because it gets that idea out of my head, it gets it onto the paper, it can be very quick. Um, this can be very quick, but it's very adaptable. So, if, I don't know what head this is, this is going to be some kind of strange head. Um, but, my mind isn't taking part in that, it's my hands and my feelings and um, just the mood I'm in, um, if, sort of move into the clay. So quite often I can find that I've done the drawing, I'm thinking about something very definite, and then when I start modelling, it becomes quite a different thing. Um, and that's that kind of uh, subconsciousness of, of your mind, really, um, you know, that Jungian theory, um, that we don't always know what we're doing um, and things just come out in our nature and I'm a great believer in that with, uh, with art. So there's something going on there, it's got a bit of a duck, duck bill play, platypus kind of look, but that's okay. That might just stay like that. Um, I did do a one before, just when I was thinking about it and that one's got more of a crow kind of face, that one's a bit firmer now. Um, this one, I'm quite liking this, this kind of attitude. It's kind of looking around. Um, sometimes they become skull heads. Sometimes they become real heads. Sometimes they'll lose... I've got no arms again on these ones. Um, I don't feel any inclination to put any arms on these ones. Those drawings didn't have arms. Sometimes they're all about the arms. I mean, this one here hasn't got a foot. It's just an arm uh, and a head. So... I just leave them as they are, they're kind of little rough sketches and, and I fire them for durability so they don't break in the studio and I've got boxes and boxes of them. They're all over the shelves and they might get put in a box and forgotten about and then I might come back to them and um, they can talk to each other and uh, interact so uh, you know, can have a bit of a fun with it as well, a bit of a laugh. So from that and from the drawing I think okay maybe I want to develop that into something bigger um, I've got this, this roll thumb, they've become more upright. Uh, I'd forgotten that this was quite upright. Um, so I'd rejected that rolled form already in my head, but it, then it came back into the, into the drawing. But at the moment, these are quite upright, these are quite proud figures. Um, so I'm going to develop those into a larger form. Um, the rolled tubes are really good for um, body parts. So if I was making feet, you see a couple of feet that I've already made, using exactly that extruded tube, um, I can make boxes of body parts, heads, feet, hands, and then they can be developed into something else. So I knew that this would probably be a figure, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll make feet and see where it goes. Um, these feet, I did the drawings of the feet before, I've, got some um, skeletons from uh, old books. Uh, I look at my feet or my hands or other people's. I go on the internet and um, look at different body shapes as well. Um, if I wasn't here, I'd probably uh, have my foot on the desk. That's quite a normal thing for me, um, even when it's cold or, or stretching my arms out and looking at, looking at the forms. So I've just kind of got that memory um, 
from that looking beforehand. And I would just model these straight off. I'd get my pencil out again, and I'd form the feet and the toes, um, and I'd be bending and stretching. And then I'd let that dry a bit, because it's a little bit soft at the moment. You can see the form developing, but it looks a bit kind of mashed at the moment. But that's okay, um, because most clay pieces you wouldn't make all at once anyway. You'd do the drawing, you'd start something, you might go back to the drawing. Um, there's also all the other processes, so I might have mixed the clay in between. Uh, there's the firing, I might have done some firing, and then I'd come back. So you can see that foot is a starting point. I'd check the sizes if I was making a pair, um, but I'm going to reject that one now, and I'll stick with those ones. What I would do as well is I'd, I'd hollow these out, so I'd stick a pencil um, up the heel, stick it in there, and then I'd close that gap. Um, up to make sure things were hollow and suitable for firing because I don't really see the point in having lots of bits of clay that's going to break especially the way my studio is you might have seen it on, um, on um, some other clips I am a pretty chaotic person so uh, if it's on the floor it's on the side it will get broken there's less chance of it getting broken if it's fired so those are hollow and ready to go and then I'm going back to my tube again. So I started off with the little tube. And I've got an extruder in the studio. Um, and this is um, college's extruder. Um, so then I go upscale. And I've got a fab tube here made out of the same kind of clay. So it's a, it's a structurally strong clay um, with the grog and the paper, the paper for... Uh, So when I scale it up, um, I'd like to use a bigger tube. Um, if I want a bigger tube than this, I'd roll out a slab of clay and just make a tube. Um, the problem I have with it is collapse. I have quite a lot of problems with collapse because of the weight of the clay. So if the tube's got a diameter, say, of, of this, if I then stand it up, um, there's a lot of weight and it wants to just collapse. But I love a good collapse. I love the collapse of clay because it, it mimics skin for me. Um, so what I'll do, this is a bit, little bit long. I'm going to cut to about there, um, reject that bit. Uh, and you can see that, um, like a really sad person now, but those um, delicious extrusion lines, I love those. So I'm going to just slice a bit out, because if this is a body, um, you can see the different clays in there. It's not very well mixed, but it'd be fine. Um, but I'm going to make that the end of the legs. So you can imagine that tapering of the form, um, which I didn't really have with that because it was such a small piece of tube. I just kind of squashed it. Whereas this one, you're going to notice if it's um, straight, whereas you need that natural um, tapering to the ankle. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to... I'm just going to wiggle it a bit. So we're going to use gravity to stretch it. And you can see the clay's rip in there, which, which I really like. Um, and then I'm going to do a proportion. So the top, but this is my torso. Same thing I did with the other one. And then this is going to be my legs, a pair of legs. So I'm going to collapse it a bit. And look, at, you're getting these creases, these um, like old skin, like old person skin. I love that. Um, and then what I'm doing, I'm gonna just, that's going to be my bottom. So I'm going to push that bottom there. And then I'm going to get a pencil out again. And I'm just going to draw the bottom. And I'm going to draw where I want my legs to be. How even is that? Right. And then this is going to be my legs there. So it looks like a mermaid at the moment, but it's not... Um, that's not a plan. Um, I need to know where my knees are, so I'm just going to kind of mark a knee. And then this is the fun bit, well I like it, where I get something in and I push the clay out. So you can see that form there, and you've got a little bit of kind of um, top of the leg. But what I want 
is I want it to look more like muscle and skin. So it all starts kind of looking wrong at this point, but it goes okay in the end. Back of the knee joint, and then it's got to go narrower where the ankle is. So if I can get something, I've got these tools that um, I bought from a clay supplier's but found these the other day, these bamboo um, knitting needles, I think they are. And if you can get something like that in, you can actually um, push it out. And I've ripped the clay there, but I'm not bothered about that. And you can just push it out where you want it to develop as um, part of the muscle form. And I don't mind it being repaired, shows the hand of the maker, which I think is really important. Um, and I'm going to fold that up. to get a sort of rolled figure. Now the legs are too fat there. I'm not happy about that. This is when you start butchering it. Um, and it's really soft. You can see it's kind of flopping. But that's okay. So what I do, the whole that form needs to be hollow. So I'm just gonna just hack it a bit. Um, I get a, usually a pencil and stick a hole in here. And I just push it out. So I can get a tool in, or I get my finger in a little bit, of, get a finger in there. And then this is my me, me bottom now. And you can see, I think you can see that bottom developing. It needs to go out more than that. And it's ripping with the clay, that's fine. That's not big enough, I don't think. But the clay's quite soft, so I need to just push it out a bit more. What sometimes happens is you stretch the clay so thin, there's no clay for it to stretch anywhere, so it just splits. So if you get a spare bit, and you add a patch on, then you can see where it's splitting there. It's already split in there. It's just because there's no more clay for it for me to stretch. It's gone thin there. Although the clay's quite fat um, and thick, there's not enough for me to do what I want to do. So I just patch it. And then also it gives it that weight again. Um, the, the weight of the, of the form sort of sitting heavily. Um, I mean, they don't necessarily need to be a, a big fat form, but they might be, but any form is going to have um, an element of gravity. Um, so you want a bit, of, a bit of solidity, especially if it's going to sit like that. And actually, I need a bit of, a bit of uh, collapse there. Now I've got a bit of a pert bottom going on, which isn't kind of what I normally like. I like it to have some flesh rolls. Because you know, we like, I like a bit of reality. Not necessarily for it to look realistic. I just want it to be a real thing rather than a manufactured or a, a diet altered body. I want it to be a real body with, with those kind of human rolls in the figure. Um, so I want a bit of, a bit of flesh um, here on the back. And if I stretch it and push it, then we get kind of flesh rolls. There's a, there's a nice one just developing there. Because um, we are real people, you know, it's, it's important to give it that personality. Yeah, I'm liking, I'm liking that. Um, and then this would be the chest, barrel out the chest a bit. And I didn't have arms on my little clay sketches, so I probably wouldn't put arms on that, although I've got hand, sorry, over here. This is how the studio would work for me. And I'd just maybe put hand next, so it doesn't matter that it's porcelain. And just see, or do I want a hand, you know, I might even just try a, a limb. Um, and decide whether I want a limb, um, but I'm not. I'm not bothered about that today. So we're going to reject, reject the hand, reject the limb. Um, 
and I'd be working on it and just kind of wiggling in it until I was happy with, with the form. Now that one's kind of got feet anyway, just the way the clay's folded. But because I've made those feet, I'd attach those feet. So I just want to see what they look like. Um, can always add that clay back on. You know, it's, it's uh, what we're saying about adaptability. Can change it, can add to it, can see how it looks. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of got a bit of a flop, but it's not a bad flop. So from that, just give it a little bit of a marking where those legs would be. Um, I'd move on to a shoulder. That's so after the bit that we've rejected for the feet. And I'd probably actually will have one of those. Because these make a really nice shoulder joint. Um, and I'd put that on the top of the torso to give it a body. So we've got a structure going on there. That's the neck, forming, just forming a neck. We've got a natural, um, there's a natural line there that's developed just from that collapse of the clay. Sorry about me doing that. Um, I do like to use my body as, as the um, reference. So if I am doing something kind of weird, I quite often have a mirror and I will make that shape. And, and try and sort of see how, how my body flexes, not because my body is a perfect model in any way, um, just because I have got all those bits and I can see if a body would move like that. So, um, struggle a bit with the back, but I know there's a shoulder blade in there, so I'd get a pencil again and I'd probably just push out a bit more of a shoulder blade. That clay's a little bit thin at the top where I've added um, that one hasn't got a shoulder blade at all. We love that. And also that's helping me to pull the clay together. Um, so on the neck, give it a bit of a neck. Use another bit of clay. Again, this tube's really great. I can push through, roll a neck. And then you can start seeing the attitude of the body, which I really like it because it starts, it starts becoming its own thing then um, to its sideways. You can see that leaning forward and that neck. You have to get your finger in sometimes. Um, that neck's starting to give you attitude. That we, these are a bit more casual. This one's giving it a bit of attitude. It's going forward. It's, it's looking at, at, at you or um, whoever's thinking about buying it potentially, which is always a good thing. People give them their own personalities as well. So I can be making something and I can be thinking about um, maybe the way somebody's treated me or something good or bad or something you know that I've seen. And then these develop into their own things. And this one has given me that, which I quite like. It's maybe because I'm looking at the camera a bit, not very often. Um, so what I did with the, this is I made another one, but I'm actually liking this one better. So I'll show you the one that I did before in Blue Peter Styley, and then I'm going to come back to this one because I'm happier with that one. The one I made before when I was thinking about um, today, and this one's got a lot more um, collapse, a lot more withering um, about it. You can see the way the clay is broken. This is the hard, it's harder clay. And um, it's, this one's more aged, I think. It's an older body that's um, kind of crawling in on itself. And the plan with this one was, was maybe to, to make it really um, kind of insular. But actually, I'm, I'm liking the attitude of that. So this is not um, unusual for me to do this. So quite often I'll work on, say, four pieces at the same time, and I'll just wrap one in plastic um, when I'm kind of frustrated with it or whether, well, I'm not sure where it's going, you know, what's the head on this one? Is it having arms, legs? Um, does it need a pair of feet? Because I've got two bodies and one set of feet. 
Um, I didn't expect to get that far with that one this one today, so that's why I pre-prepared this one. But because it's got that kind of closed feeling, I'm not sure where it's going, so I'm going to reject that one. I think the feet probably would cross over like that. And go back to this one, the, um, the man with attitude. So, and, it, and it has become a man. I don't always make that decision beforehand. Um, sometimes they've got a, a, like a, a soft voluptuousness, um, uh, bellies, boobs, and sometimes they haven't. I mean, they can be very fleshy men, um, but they kind of become their own gender. Um, I don't always give them gender, though those look quite male. These could be male or female. Um, they just become their thing. And um, I've also started making, I've got um, an exhibition at the moment just opening in Cardiff, um, which is questioning gender. So it's, it's quite male forms, but they're painted in, in quite a sort of pretty way. Um, and it's challenging kind of what people, how people see themselves, really, whether their body does reflect their nature. So um, it, it, I don't mind whether it's male or female, it just, it just becomes its own thing. So what I do with these is I'm going to stick those feet straight on because they're quite soft. I'm just going to blend that in. I would normally scratch and slip, but I don't want to um, pick it up and lose that, that fold. So I'm just going to blend them for now. And I'm not sure, I think I will cut those legs open. It's happened. That's fine. I might have a bit of a, um, maybe a bit of an opening here. For some, I'm not sure what's going on behind there, but um, that's okay. And then the next stage would be to have a head. Um, yeah, I quite like that abstract shape of kind of a, a revit. I mean, it, it looks a bit um, a bit uh, female body parts, but um, but that's okay. You know, it, it doesn't have to be um, anything specific. So leave that. And then as far as the head goes, I had this kind of animal head on these ones, but it doesn't necessarily have to have an animal head. It could just be broken off there, but I, I want that leaning forward, I want that expression. Um, I made a couple of heads before, but I think they're probably too small for this one now. Um, just got tissue all over it. There's a, it looks like a Batman head to me now. Um, but I think that's too small. Yeah, it is. That one's too small. Also had a um, just a male head. That's a bit got a bit of a Greek god look. So um, not sure that's the right one. But the form's okay. It might just not be big enough. Made a turkey because of Christmas, I think. Um, Vegetarian, so um, but obviously far too small, sort of pea head. So what I do, get a bit of clay, and I just make a pinch pot. And I hadn't planned to necessarily make a new head, but I think I just will, just go with it. You can see there's some other clay mixed in with with that. That's just come through the extruder, and it's just really really simple pinch pot. And I'd squeeze it and press it out to form a head just to make sure I've got the right size of head, because I don't want a little head for this one. It needs to be the right kind of sized head. And I need to just move it around a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of roughly right size. So when I've got the rough size of it, what I can do is then alter it. So again, it's just pushing it out. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna do bird head now. Well, that was the, the plan. Might just do um, a really kind of head with an attitude. So just pinching, that's going to be the nose. And it's quite a rough version at this point. So the eyes sockets, you can see a face kind of coming out of that. Um, quite often I'll just push up my nail, use my fingers, draw on it, and stretch it out. And I want, this, I want a really prominent chin, just because of the way I've been talking about making this piece and this, this attitude. So a real kind of sticky out chin. And I'm just stretching to get that form. So I 
don't mess with my clay. And then I just whack it on. If, it, if I don't like it, I can take it off again. You know, let's just see how it works. Does it, is it gonna work? You had the weird side then, I think you've got that side now. Right, and that's all soft, so that's collapsing, which is okay, because the back of the neck's collapsing, and it's giving it that fleshy feel again. That, um, that body um, relevance, it's not an immobile piece of work, it becomes um, something that you can imagine would be ready to move, you know, animated. I do sometimes make pieces of work that, um, that can be moved because I think once a piece is released from my hands, like I said, you put your own message on it anyway, so, you know, if you can change it, oh, that was a good, a good move then, if you squash it like that, you get that tension between the shoulders. Um, and the neck's gone weird now, which is, I quite like that neck. And it, he's got like a caved in sort of attitude, um, which is good. So I probably can't do a lot more on that now. Um, what I'd have to do afterwards is just finely model the features um, because it's, the neck wants to collapse because it's a bit soft, um, because I planned on using the one I'd made before and I've changed my mind. Um, He's got a very skeletal face, this man, which I'm not sure is, is good, but that's okay. Um, all right, he's quizzical now. From that point, I would play with it quite a lot more, but then I'd find um, a base. So what I'd do, just move those pieces away, I'd start thinking how I'm gonna actually finish the piece. That one's on wood. Um, so sometimes I find bits on the beach, you know, pallets, bricks, things like that, uh, bits of oak, chairs. Uh, I might make a base out of clay. That one's been um, pushed with a pan and then pushed out, so it's kind of a moon kind of base. And then recently I've started mixing clay with other materials apart from paper. So in here I've got um, uh, mouldy tea and coffee. Um, that, anything combustible can be mixed into clay. Uh, you've got to make sure the particles aren't too big because as it burns out, it's going to affect structure. So I've mixed tea and coffee um, into this one as well as paper. And then what I'd probably do is I'd just bash that around a bit. Hopefully I've got another classic tool here, lovely butter pat. Um, get these for two quid I paid for this one. I've got loads of these. And I'd really give it a bit of a bit of a smack because what I need is I need it to be big enough to sit on the guy so um, so we'll just see how and quite often I just drop it on the floor which I'm, I'm not going to do on the table because everything will fall over and then I'd scoot that out afterwards but I want to see what it'd look like Oops, all going to collapse now. On a base. So, because if I put it on a base, I can change the way, the attitude of the feet. So maybe he would be flexing that foot. He might be kind of stretching. Maybe his toe, I quite like the idea of his toe stretching. Oh, it's a weird guy, this one, but um, that's okay. You know, and then what I'd do is I'd make sure all the joints were really well fixed. He is collapsing a bit, so he'd need to be dried now. Um, and then stick it all together. So I'd stick the base, but I wouldn't do that until I knew that this, this structure was structurally strong and was going to survive. Um, so I'd put him aside, dry him, just make sure he's hollow. All the um, hollow areas have got a flow to the outside. So you saw on that one, I've got um, a big hole there. I'd cover it up and just put a small hole on that one um, and then stick it together. And then I'd probably paint it and put some oxides on it. And, uh, and then that'd be it. And then I'd think of some sort of name for him. Not, not like uh, Stan or anything, you know, you'd have some title to the piece, 
because I'd then leave him in the studio and think about it. Um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs>